Cut two strips of ceramic tape to about three and three quarters inches. They'll be going around the heater end like this, and this one will be going around this way. Mark the center of each. And you'll cut a hole in the center using this piece here. Make sure you get it pretty much in the center. Put these aside for now, we'll be using them later. In the MK5 kit, you'll probably receive shorter, a shorter piece of ceramic tape. If so, then just cut one for 270 millimeters and do the same thing here. And then the longer one will, um, will have the same center cut. The kit will also include a solution that will be used to eliminate any freezing of the, of the assembly due to heat. So we're gonna be putting this stuff on the threads of both the, the nozzle and of this tube. Apply the anti-seize solution on the threads of the nozzle and of the thermal barrier. You can use your finger for this. You want to put it on pretty liberally. Okay, that should be enough. Now you can thread on the nozzle onto the heater core. Do it by hand and then you'll have to get an adjustable wrench to put it in all the way. So take a 13 millimeter wrench and adjustable crescent wrench and tighten them. I'll put on the thermal barrier. This will have to be tightened just with the fingers and just tighten it as much as possible. Insert the PTFE tube all the way in until it stops and we'll cut the end. Just to make sure the PTFE is going all the way in, just to make a, a mark. That doesn't seem to do it, so we'll use a little knife here. Just to make a little mark and measure it. Looks like mine isn't going all the way through, so it's good I did that. Make another mark. Let's see, yes, that's going all the way down to the tip of the nozzle. So go back to that point and then cut off the end. A really sharp X-Acto knife should be able to do the trick. It should look like this when you're done. Now we can install the, res the power resistors using these little bolts, or these little screws, and the resistors themselves. There should be two holes here. These will go on with a little Allen wrench. And attach the other one. We're going to solder the two resistors in parallel. We're going to make these two connections. We'll make these two connections and then we'll wire them out from there. Use an X-Acto knife or a really sharp knife to cut the insulation off of this special wire. This wire is coated with PTFE, which will handle higher temperatures, so this is the best wire to use. I'm going to use as much of the wire as I can for the mechanical hold. I'll solder that on first. I'll wrap the other side. Before you solder this last, this other side, you'll have to add another extension of this. So this can be soldered to the next wire. As you don't want the other wire, which is naturally insulated, to be near the hot area. So I'm going to solder this side together.
Now we can do the same thing to the other side. Now we're going to solder the black and red wire to the PTFE wires. I'm just going to curl them in on each other, twist them, and solder. Yep. I'm using heat shrink to, to provide insulation. For this next step, we'll be adding the thermocouple. The thermocouple is used in the uh, Generation 4 electronics. You'll have a metal end, just a little tiny bit of wire um, exposed or metal exposed. And then you'll have an end that has a yellow wire and um, a red wire or red and yellow lead. On the hot end, you'll see that there's a, uh, a hole on one side. Uh, there won't be one on the, on the other side. So this is a threaded hole that is used to attach the metal end of the thermocouple um, and you'll need the an M2 uh, screw and washer for this. We will need to fasten the metal end of the thermocouple to this section of the hot end. So first add the smaller washer onto the M2 screw, if I can get it. Jesus, I can't do it. He goes, Presley, what did he do yesterday in school? And he should be... The ladybug and Presley goes. <gasps> hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can use the the provided Allen wrench to assist in installation. And keep it loose so we can put so the thermocouple metal end can go inside, go between this. And you'll want to stick it out the corner. You'll want to sort of angle it to the corner so the ceramic tape can, it can go through the ceramic tape corners. You'll see in the, in the later part of this video. And just tighten it so the thermocouple metal end will be secure. We'll be installing the two pieces of uh, ceramic tape. Use the long, the longer of the two to wrap around this side, and the shorter of the two will be wrapping around this side. We'll start with the longer side, and then go ahead and put on the shorter side on top of that, and then we'll wrap it around. Fold the ceramic tape, um, the shorter side underneath the, the red wire. Now we can fold the longer sides, and we're going to be um, we're going to wrap Kapton tape around the entire um, the entire hot end. Once you've taped it enough to get it folded over, then you can just start wrapping the Kapton tape around it. I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I
We have the wires from the power resistors um, exiting this part of the hot end, and you have the thermocouple exiting the corner at this point. You have the ceramic tape wrapped around the hot end, and you have the Kapton tape that is wrapped around um, the entire hot end, so everything stays in place. To make sure that the resistors were wired correctly, you can test the leads, and it should be 2.5 ohms. You're testing this lead and this lead here, and I'm just gonna test the ends that is wired to, to these two terminals. Put your meter in the ohms setting, and we'll see what we get.